The most valuable thing in doing this solutions work is the response that I get as a reporter from people in the community who have all kinds of different relationships to the problem and to the proposed solutions, have very different beliefs that they're bringing to it, very different attitudes. But if you do that work in, in a kind of a deep and honest way, people who are all over the map in terms of their relationship to climate problems and climate action will respond to you, will find something in that story of value to take away. With the river, with the help of Solutions Journalism Network, we published a three-part series about climate solutions in the Hudson Valley and upstate New York. We really were drawn to the appeal of Solutions Journalism, and, and we signed up for one of the early Solutions Journalism Network trainings. Not only was there uh, like an enthusiastic reader response to our solutions reporting, I personally heard from, from many dozens of elected officials how to put into action some of the state climate goals. And I think that solutions reporting can provide kind of a framework for at least possibilities about how to do that. Energy and climate are issues I've been working on for a long time from a kind of a, a policy perspective and also a, like a local solutions oriented perspective. I think what Lissa really brought to it was a really great understanding of the landscape culturally in the region. We need to be looking at climate as much more than a policy issue. It's a people issue. We spend so much time as reporters talking to powerful people, politicians, business leaders, and we start thinking that's our audience. And it's just, it's just not the case, especially for local news. Local news is a really good corrective to this attitude because you're constantly in contact with the communities in which the problem is happening. With one of the stories that we did as part of this grant, we covered a sail freight schooner called the Schooner Apollonia that we believe is the only current sailboat that's running freight in, in the United States. And so it's a very, very limited solution, but there you're kind of outlining a horizon of possibility, which is also what the folks behind the Schooner Apollonia are trying to do. And so the media can help kind of disseminate that, that possibility. So we started filming in March 2020, and we, which was right when COVID hit, and we were supposed to just do the filming over the course of that summer. You know, like a documentary usually goes, you know, we're sort of playing with the footage and working with things, and we sort of, at that time, what the film sort of felt like was more like a biography on Sam. But what he was doing was this really unprecedented thing of sail freight uh, cargo on the Hudson River. And right around that time, Lisa's article had come out. It was like a revelation at that moment, seeing someone who had gone there and done this sort of research and connected the dots to a lot of experts in the field that we hadn't been connected to as a production team. And it fundamentally changed the film and created a surrogate for the audience that might have questions about the feasibility of sail freight. We were able to kind of put a lot of that information in. The articles in the river, the topics that were covered were just fascinating in their own right. It just opens up your imagination about how we can transform our society in interesting ways and switch from thinking about clogged streets with cars and trucks to these beautiful sailing vessels delivering goods down the Hudson. The solution stories we did generally outperformed the average for our other stories. But then we also had a membership program where one of the perks was a climate newsletter. That newsletter served as a kind of breakout to highlight a lot of our solutions reporting. And we launched that program and that newsletter kind of alongside um, the rollout of the stories that we did as part of this project. And we could really see both in the numbers and in the kind of direct feedback we were getting from readers, um, a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of response to the solutions reporting that we were doing. Reaching wider audiences feels like it would be of utmost importance. Like if this story is that important, if we're talking about the future of the planet, we're talking about the realities of climate change, it's not a problem to convince the people that, that already are convinced of it. It's about bringing more people into the tent to kind of understand the problem. There are no top-down solutions to the climate crisis. We have to be engaging communities. We have to be engaging everyone. And we have to all be rowing in the same direction. We all have to perceive it this as something that requires an urgent response, but also understand and appreciate the opportunities that addressing the climate crisis presents to us for addressing 
a host of other issues and also making sure that we're transitioning in a way that doesn't leave people behind, that's equitable and creates just a healthier society in a social and economic way. So we need much more coverage of the path forward.